Corsair is entering the ring with the K70 Pro TKL, but can it hold its own against all of the other Hall Effect keyboards that have come out this year? Let's take a look. While this video is sponsored by Corsair, my thoughts and opinions on this keyboard are my own. This keyboard starts off at a price point of $179 and $189 if you want double shot PBT keycaps, which should just be the default. I'm not too sure why anybody wouldn't want that. Inside the box, you get the keyboard itself, a very nice cable, and you get this wrist rest that feels surprisingly good. And I'm not usually a big fan of wrist rest, but the fact that they included one and I don't think that it's garbage is already a pro for me. In terms of looks, I do think this keyboard is definitely unique or it at least tries something different with the two clear buttons next to the volume knob which in my opinion look awesome when the RGB shines through them. The specs are very similar to most Hall Effect keyboards out on the market right now but it does have 8000 hertz polling rate and I did think something cool to point out is the fact that it does support consoles such as the Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S and the PlayStation 4 and 5. Now they did mention that they were trying to to go for a thockier sound signature here with two layers of foam and in my opinion they kind of missed the mark on that by choosing a low profile design usually if you want a thockier sound signature or anything like that you can't really have a design that pretty much doesn't have a top case as it makes the keyboard sound thinner but that's not to say it sounds bad it just doesn't sound quote unquote thocky like they mentioned. The plate style they're using is a standard tray mount which is not the most sought after mounting style as it does sometimes create areas of the keyboard to sound different because of that screw applying more pressure in that one spot and it does create a harsher typing feel. This is present here and you can definitely hear it as well as there's the switch noise and then if you press all the way down you kind of hear the switch bottom out which might not sound the greatest for some people but I know for gaming purposes some people like a very stiff keyboard over something like a gasket mounted so it kind of just depends on what you're wanting out of your gaming keyboard as I feel like this could be both a pro or a con. In terms of switches these are a linear switch that have Hall Effect sensors of course and you can adjust the actuation from 0.1 millimeters all the way to 4 millimeters. It does have different switches for the arrow keys in FN row. Now I'm not too sure why they decided to do this but these switches are not Hall Effect and are just standard linear switches. Now they did move to a double rail structure for the stem which is supposed to improve stem wobble but I did notice that there still is some and you can kind of hear it when typing. I do think that they did a pretty good job with these switches as they are on the lighter side for gaming purposes that would be perfect. They start at a 30 gram actuation force and end at a 55 gram once you bought them out. Now me personally I prefer switches that don't have a progressive spring where the weight changes over time but I know I'm kind of in the minority when it comes to that. In terms of the sound signature, I do think these are quiet like they mentioned. I wouldn't necessarily say they're a silent switch that has, you know, sound dampeners on it, but they're definitely quieter than your average linear switch. Now, this is kind of good for, you know, if you live in a household or late night gaming where you don't want to wake people up. And I do think the feeling is also quite nice because they are factory lubed. Here's a quick sound test. You guys can hear how it sounds right out of the box. So yeah, like I said before, I don't necessarily think it sounds as thocky as they want because of the fact that it doesn't have that top case, but kind of makes the RGB look cooler 
and more, I guess, quote unquote, gamerish. So I can understand why they went for this design as it looks quite nice. Speaking of something that looks quite nice on this keyboard, I do really like the bottom as they did a pretty good job with making it look different and unique instead of just slapping their logo on the back of it. So props to them for that. As you can tell by the sound test, the stabilizers were pretty good, but the spacebar did have some sort of wobble. Now this keyboard does also have their own version of snap tap or anything like that, that a lot of people like to use on FPS games. But with companies like Valve banning it in Counter-Strike 2, I do think you should use that feature with caution depending on what game you're using so you don't get banned while playing. Lastly, their software is kind of heavy on my computer I'd say so I wasn't a big fan that it was using the whole IQ software but I understand if you're in the Corsair ecosystem this works perfectly as all of your products are on one software. Me personally I'm a big fan that they let you change some things on the keyboard itself using some hotkeys where you can change the RGB and other stuff. So I'm really happy that they at least have that on the keyboard itself built in. So you don't always have to use the software if you don't want to. Overall, I do think this keyboard has a lot going for it, but I do think in terms of the feel department, it is somewhat lacking because for me personally, I do think it is too harsh. If you like gaming keyboards that are on the stiffer side or are used to stuff like that, then this could be a great option for you as it delivers great performance, has great RGB, looks nice as well, and of course comes with that very nice wrist rest. If you are interested, I'll be leaving a link to it in the description below for you to check out. But let me know what you guys thought about the Corsair K70 Pro in the comments down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.